So realistically, if you're watching this video, you're either here to troll the comments or to see what kind of work I can do to Relic, a Telecaster that I've got. Now, you might be asking, why on earth would you want to do this to an electric guitar? I've got two of them. One of them turned up damaged, the company is then sending another one out, so I'm free to kind of experiment around with this relicking job. I went to Bunnings here, which is a massive warehouse full of hardware tools and so forth, and I wanted to try and do this as cheap as I could. Yes, I'm going to be doing it in here because it's just easier, so I'll be cleaning up a lot in between shots. But I ended up getting a few things, so I'll show you what I got to get this job done. Alright, so the first thing I purchased was 14 bucks. And this is just a piece of carpet with rubber on the bottom to stop things from sliding around. I don't have one of these and I should have bought one a long time ago. So this is the perfect size for my table. I completely fluked it. If you already have one of these, everything else will fall under 20 Australian dollars, which is a whole lot less overseas. So what else did I get? I got an adjustable sanding block. It comes with three different grades of sandpaper. So rough, medium and fine. And it also comes with a handle, which will make working hopefully a little bit easier. So there's that. I also picked up a three pack of pretty much the same things. These are ones I'm gonna use by hand. They've got a bit more flexibility in them as well. So I thought, yeah, hopefully this will work as well. I bought some masks as well, just to stop me breathing in anything that might be coming off the lacquer. And I bought a scraper. Now, there's a few little bits and pieces I already have which I might be using, but these, without the carpet, fall under 20 bucks. Just over 30 bucks, or around about 30 bucks with this piece of carpet, so. I'll show you the guitar. Here's the guitar. This is the Harley Benton TE52. This is a really nice electric guitar. It has a lot of scuff marks already along the edge of the fretboard. I'm being sent another one of these. So this is now the project guitar. And what I thought I'd do, because I've already sanded some necks in the past, we're gonna start with that. It's already got like a satin finish here. A lot of people say that you can't relic a guitar with this type of finish, this high gloss, but I beg to differ. I've seen some people do it. And even with the minimal stuff of what I've got, I reckon I can get it done. So I'm just gonna leave the strings on for the moment and give the neck a go and uh, we'll take it from there. Now I'm wearing a mask right now, so if my voice sounds funny, I apologize. I've actually got some photos which I'll post on screen of the neck I'm using for reference. That's what I'm gonna kind of make it look like if I can. So I'm gonna do heavy wear through the middle and kind of leave it a little bit on both sides here and here. Man, that feels so good. <laughs> I reckon it looks kind of cool already and there's dust and crap all over it. You know what, that was way easier than I thought. I'm not finished by the way, but I've started. Um, and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. It's not quite right here. And this is the cool thing about it, you get a lot of creative freedom when you do stuff like this. This is the part of the guitar I really want to see if I can do anything with or not. Uh, and I'm going to start with the medium with this thing. So uh, let's see how we go. Alright, so what I can tell so far is this stuff will definitely come off. And you know what, I'm actually going to go back to Heavy Relic, the top here, with the, the really coarse piece of sandpaper to begin with. I think I'm going to also have to sand over this quite a number of times to get the gloss off. And yes, I've still got the strings on. I'll take them off in a moment and we'll, we'll get to work. So here we go. All right, so this can definitely be relic. I know it looks kind of crappy at the moment, but I reckon uh, if you hang in there, it should hopefully look good by the end. And you know what? I don't even know if I really need to disassemble it. I may have to if I really want to sort of wear back the finish a lot overall, but uh, yeah, the strings will definitely have to come off soon. I'm going to just work a little bit more on the, the parts I'm going to heavily relic first, kind of work, work backwards, do the lighter areas later. So uh, yeah, and then we can ding it up a bit. Now don't get too concerned with all that white stuff going to come off. It looks a little bit more like my 52 Tally now, which is, well, it's a reissue, but it looks it looks very similar. Looks like it's been uh, used for a while. Mm -hmm. 
Now you might be wondering, well, has I, have I even done anything? <laughs> Absolutely. It, uh, it's definitely nowhere near as high gloss as it was. This is the wet cloth I'm using here just to sort of see what's going on. It's adding a little bit of dampness to the body here, but I can already see how less glossy it is now than before, which is, uh, which is awesome. So uh, I'll just keep at it. I'm gonna go for some scuff marks here. You might be wondering why I had this uh, safety scraper. You'll find out. And I really want to wear down this section here. So I'm going to go over it and then uh, try to wear it out. Haha! -ha. I'm finally getting through past the lacquer. This is definitely not an easy job. Hey, we're starting to get there. Far out, man. I'm 30 minutes in, and uh, yeah, this is a lot harder than I envisioned it, and I didn't think I'd be using the, the coarse, the most coarse sandpaper that I actually purchased, but it's definitely the best. That's just some water, wet and dry sandpaper. It doesn't look like much has happened, but uh, trust me, when it's dry, you'll definitely notice a difference. Well, I gotta tell you, this is brutal. This is really brutal. It's, uh, it's not an easy job, I gotta say. And I've got a really nice circle that I don't want right in the middle. I was trying to get that to look a little less than, like a little more worn through, uh, like not a circle. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna try and wear this back Now, I want to sort of take off this bit. That's the goal. Rick's guitar is kind of like that. Not that I'm copying his, but they get it right from Fender, whether you like it or not. The great thing about doing this, it doesn't really matter what you do. It's up to you. That's the cool part. It'd be great if I could sort of get under the varnish a little bit, but it's just not, it's not an option. You just gotta sort of wear it down. And I'm getting worn out. Now one thing I'm definitely not gonna do is uh, take off chunks on the neck. I'm not into that at all. I don't wanna, I just don't wanna do that. I'm into the dry sort of look reason I'm doing this right now is just to give it some color, give it some stain. If it works, it works. If not, you know what? I've never done this before. I watched two videos on how to do this and each of them were completely different to each other. One was Dave Simpsons, who's an awesome YouTuber, so go subscribe to him. And this isn't really all of his tricks, but some of them. And the other one was, I can't remember his name, but he's a bald English guy with tats all over him. He's a, he's a nice guy too. 
uh, go check out him. I'll put links in the cards. And I thought what we'd do is give it a bit of a smear. Give it a bit of a, you know, give it some, give it a little bit of dirt. I almost feel like I need an electric sander because um, to get through this is, it's really tough. This video has been going an hour and 10 minutes. I won't be able to move my arms tomorrow. I like the top here. I think that looks cool. It's not too over the top. I think what I'm just gonna do now is maybe give the rest of the areas that are visible a sand. Um, and then I'm gonna take off the strings, go over the fretboard just a little bit, not a lot, just a little bit. If you do this, buy the sand blocks that have the sand on the sandpaper on the side. Yeah, that's awesome. You'll probably hate it, but I love it. I reckon that looks great. Yeah, there we go. It's a little bit too square around the edges. Oh, shit. I think trying to be random is not an easy job. It's maybe a little bit hard to see, but this is gonna look cool. Or at least I think it will. I like this big belt buckle rash there. It's maybe a little bit higher than where it would be normally, but you know, who cares? That looks pretty cool. Uh, the edges on the top look great for what I'm going for here. Um, yep, there's dust over everything, but you know, it's not gonna affect anything. It might, I might have to just spray the switch and give it a clean, but overall it's looking good. It's looking better than I thought it was gonna look, actually. The neck looks great. It feels amazing, too. I, I love these high sort of um, sanded necks like this. It's, uh, it's really cool. Let's do the frets. Now I can honestly see how easy it would be to get carried away with this. I'm just gonna do a little bit more. <laughs> do a little bit more over the fret, frets here. Maybe a couple of them. This one, maybe the ones without the dots. There we go. Still staying away from the frets on the most part. Now for those who don't know, you don't really feel the fretboard itself when you play, you're on the frets. So it doesn't really matter what I do to them. I could scuff them up more, use the screwdriver. Now the idea with the saw was to just put some dints in it, some little chips that I could go over with the pencil, and then uh, hopefully when I sand it off, I don't know if this is gonna work either, I'll have little dirty bits in there. I'm just gonna sort of scratch out this bit a little bit better, and then that'll be about it. All right, there's one more essential, I think, when you relic a guitar, or at least if you, you're doing what I'm doing, butchering it. I think one thing you gotta do is something to the scratch plate. Dr. Rick just texted me and he said, what are you doing to the scratch plate? I was like, I don't know. And then I thought about it, he's, I'm like, yeah, he's right, you do need to do something. So, I don't know what's gonna happen when I do this. I've never sanded plastic. I'm just gonna scuff it up a little bit, give it a couple of marks, nothing too much. I reckon this is the sort of stuff that's really, really easy to ruin or scratch too much. Look, it'll get scratches like this anyway from just playing. My uh, 52 reissue I've had for nearly 10 years, that that's kind of relic to, on, you know, through use. All right, overall, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I think the back looks awesome. I like how there's like two different stages of wear here. 
sort of like a lighter wear and then the really big heavy sort of relic in the middle here. I think that looks really cool. It feels smooth too. I gotta say, I went over it with the sandpaper to make sure there's no splinters or anything like that everywhere too. This little bit here, I actually added some uh, permanent marker and then sanded it off and I did that across most of this. So you'll see some basically like two different colors uh, in the actual relic area here. It's not great, but it's okay. Like this is my first go. And where I dropped the saw on the guitar as well, all over the place, lots of little marks. I really like how they've come up, but I think some of the best work is definitely on the neck. I did the same trick here. I sanded it off and then I also went over it with two different colored markers. I used a blue one and I also used a black one and then I sanded it back. You can kind of see like I didn't completely sand off that bit right there, but it doesn't really matter. It will do for now. I want to work out how to actually stain this properly or stain it a little bit so it looks a little darker than what it looks right now, but it works. So if you have any suggestions for that, um, please let me know. Now, how does the front look? So I think the fretboard looks actually pretty good. I went over this, I did the same sort of thing. I used a marker and then sort of sanded it back. Uh, I might go back over this. I'm not exactly 100% happy with uh, the color on the fretboards. I think when, when it's got strings on it, it won't look like it does now, but as you can see, you can still see some of the marker there. I smudged it pretty well on some of them and not so well on others, you know, first go. So we may tweak this as we get going. Now I did the same thing here. I sanded the heck out of this, <laughs> but as you can see too, I think the two color thing kind of looks cool. And same with this. Now this kind of looks completely different. There's a lot of grain in this, uh, piece right here so it sort of came through and uh, yeah you can it feels kind of textured as well it's kind of interesting but it looks all right a couple little marks and dings here from the saw as well as down here scratch plate looks pretty cool now this is a bit hard to see perhaps but I scratched it up a little bit here also a little bit there as well so yeah there you go there's also some smaller details around this side as well i added a few little bits and pieces just to make it look worn and nice now you might be looking at this going man it looks really shiny still uh, if you can comp actually compare it to what it used to look like which is in here uh, it's completely different let me spin this around so that's the original color right here the original varnish it's very reflective and this is not this is much more of a satin finish now as well so there we go. I'm going to string it up, take it out for a play, but what I'm also going to do is ask for some suggestions on how to make this maybe slightly tinted, you know, uh, and I want to keep the budget pretty good, pretty low too. So uh, nothing that was going to cost me like a hundred bucks, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. I also did a little bit of work on the headstock as well, just uh, on the edge there and also on this edge as well which is pretty cool. So let me know what you think. I'm sure I'll hear all about it. <laughs> I'm absolutely fried. This video has taken me all up about three hours. So if you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And if you've done this sort of stuff before, or you can give me some recommendations on how to make the back of the neck look a little dirtier and a little bit less just like it's been sanded. Please let me know in the comments as well. I want that sort of fender look. Rick's Custom Shop looks great on the back. I don't ex ever expect it to look like that based on sort of the timbers used and all that kind of stuff as well. And just, you know, trying to keep this as low as possible in terms of a budget. For 30 bucks, I got everything that I needed, including that piece of carpet that I worked on. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned up, but let me know. I'm sure this will get mixed results, but you know what? I don't care. I wanted to give this a shot. This is my first time doing it. I'm not a guitar tech or anything like that or a luthier. So for me, doing something like this is fun. A huge thanks again to Toman for sending this guitar out and letting me sort of butcher it as well. I'm gonna take this up and have a play with it live and see how it feels in the hand and all that kind of stuff, just the way that it is. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it looks on stage, if it looks like it's a try-hard relic job or whether it looks legit. <laughs> anyway, I don't care. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll catch you soon. See you guys.